the, you know, how infectious this is, how many people it kills. This is not smallpox. So it's, a, and this no, is not a fully more, approved, it's, it's not a fully approved vaccine uh, either. Neither was the smallpox vaccine in 1905. No, I think COVID is worse than smallpox in many ways. It may not kill as many people, but we don't know what the long-term impact is. I have kill the right 300 to million people airplane. worldwide. I 300 have, million people. I know. I have a right. I know. I have the right to get on an airplane and know that everybody on that airplane is vaccinated or tested. You may have the right not to get vaccinated, but you have no right but, to spread the disease to me, even if you won't kill me. Professor, even if you won't kill have you not been listening? I don't want this impact. is Harvard Law I have, School. But okay. I don't believe you. I didn't go to Harvard yeah, Law School, but I did hear. Yeah. But I did hear the president today talk about how if you're vaccinated, you spread the virus. You still can spread That's the virus. True. I mean, the data out of Israel, but the data out of the UK, spread, they're freaking it'll, it'll out about this. Be spread. It'll be spread much less seriously. Look, we okay. don't know what we don't know. Okay, Nobody you can deprive people of their constitutional certainty. rights on the basis there of a no vaccine that still, there is that still no, allows the spread of a there virus. Is no, okay. There is no constitutional right to get on an airplane and to spread the disease to me, even if it's not going to be fatal. Okay. All right. I have constitutional we rights. Gotta go. you we got to go. We're up against the hard break, but and the court's I, I get you. It. It's not smallpox. Professor, thank you. There is no quicker measure of time than when a Fox News host realizes their guest isn't willing to push their propaganda and them ending the interview. This is Laura Ingram with Alan Dershowitz, the guy who defended O.J. Simpson, Donald Trump, Harvey Weinstein, and Jeffrey Epstein. Not exactly a beacon of righteousness. And yet even that guy is capable of acknowledging objective reality when it comes to COVID. Even Alan Dershowitz, who Fox News can trot on air anytime it needs a warm-blooded body to blindly spout even the most depraved talking points, isn't willing to tow Fox News' increasingly dangerous line when it comes to this virus. What does it say about Fox News when Alan Dershowitz is the sane one? And here's the crux of the argument. These Fox hosts like Laura Ingram keep pretending that this is just about your personal freedoms. Few things here. One, this is not a personal issue if spreading the virus impacts other people. Look, if people want to hurt themselves in the privacy of their own homes, it's a free country. But your right to swing your fist ends when it meets my face. In a pandemic, people are vectors. So if you don't want to get vaccinated, that's fine, but you're also not entitled to participate in society where other people are taking measures to keep everyone else safe. Republicans love to crow about the free market and capitalism. This is that very market at work. Businesses have the right to make decisions to keep their employees and customers safe, and they should. So when more and more businesses begin requiring proof of vaccinations, which again, as private companies, they have the right to do, Republicans should remember that you don't only get to applaud capitalism when it's convenient for you. Second, when the right crows about personal freedoms, what about the freedom of everyone else not to get sick? Why is the only freedom that they ever focus on for the selfish ones? Don't the people who are actually considering the lives of everyone else count too? I think my grandparents in their 80s should have the freedom to survive, the freedom to be able to go out in public without worrying about catching a virus that could kill them. But it's never those people that Fox News advocates for, just the ones who are hurting everyone else. Third, I get that Republicans want to turn this into a culture war because that's all they have, but rules like this aren't new. If you don't wear a shirt or shoes into a restaurant or store, you won't get served. And if that analogy isn't close enough, consider the literal vaccine mandates that already exist. If you went to public school, you've likely already gotten a number of vaccines, including chickenpox, MMR, DTaP, polio, and hepatitis B, because they were mandated. And guess what? We're still here. And guess what else? No one gets polio anymore. It's almost like, and bear with me on this one, vaccines work. Imagine that. Laura Ingram then goes on to cite how some people who've been vaccinated can still get the virus. But here's the thing. While there have been breakthrough COVID cases, they represent less than 0.08% of the 164 million Americans who've been vaccinated since January. We're talking about a highly contagious virus that's reduced to infecting less than 0.1%, meaning that you've got more than 99.9% .9 of protection when you're vaccinated. And of the people who do get infected, even despite being vaccinated, you're virtually assured survival. For example, 
in Texas, of the 9,000 COVID deaths since February, all but 43 were unvaccinated. That's better than a 99.5% survival rate, and that's not even counting age and comorbidities of those who died. All of that is to say that the efficacy is clear. Consider too, health officials have maintained that breakthrough cases are expected, extremely rare, and not a sign of vaccine failure. What it is a sign of is A, the fact that a lingering pandemic will of course create variants, which makes breakthrough cases even more likely, meaning that by refusing to get vaccinated, you're actually helping create the variants that are then leading to breakthrough cases that vaccine opponents are then citing, basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. And B, that no vaccine is 100% effective, which we've known since day one. That's why the point here is to vaccinate as many people as possible, because vaccines are imperfect. That's why achieving herd immunity is so crucial right now, since the lack of herd immunity will only allow the virus to continue to mutate and render the vaccines less effective. And if the Laura Ingrams of the world cared about her audience surviving, she'd be advocating for that, and yet the fact that she isn't speaks volumes. The fact is that the science here is overwhelming. We have a sample size of hundreds of millions of people who are virtually assured survival as a result of this free, life-saving vaccine. The same vaccine that Fox News hosts like Laura Ingram are discouraging their viewers from getting by virtue of whipping up all this anti-vax sentiment. And while it's just another culture war issue for the network, another piece of faux outrage that they'll use to drive views and clicks, for the people who listen to them, it could very well mean the loss of their life. It's a shame that Fox News sees their own viewers as dispensable while they try to score a few cheap political points off a public health crisis. If you enjoyed that video and you're looking for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. It's a no BS look at the top stories of the week, along with interviews with the top names in politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, and more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the subscribe link right here on this screen to join the more than 1 million people who've already subscribed to my channel. And and finally, to donate to my Don't Be a Mitch Fund, where I'm raising money for a whole raft of different voter outreach and voter registration groups in the closest states ahead of midterms in 2022, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Texas, you can find that link on this screen as well. Thanks for watching.